Alright, so today I will be talking about photoperiodism with specific attention to birds. We will look at how birds differ from the other species we study and the way that they can absorb light. To start, I thought it'd be helpful to do a quick overview of what we have learned about photoperiods. As we learned from our readings, a photoperiod can be defined as the hours of light in a 24-hour period. And it has a lot to do with melatonin and the penile gland. The penile gland is actually distinct from the rest of the brain and is sensitive to photoperiod because it receives information from the optic nerves. The penile gland always wants to make melatonin, but light inhibits it. You can see here, we have the day or light inhibits, it's an inhibitory signal going to the penile gland. Here we have night or darkness, and that's going to stimulate the signal from the penile gland. In animal sciences, the main application of photoperiod is with breeding. This picture here shows the effect on breeding. So we have light input, which is perceived through the eyes or the retinal photoreceptors, and it travels on the retinohypothalamic tract to the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus. There it follows a pathway to the penile gland through the paraventricular nuclei and then suprachiasmatic Super superior cervical ganglion. The penile gland tells the hypothalamus to secrete GnRH, or gonadotropin releasing hormone, which signals the pituitary to produce LH or FSH, which are luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, which then affect the gonadal activity. So in mammals, the pathway occurs as we just saw in the illustration. Since this is the only pathway for photoperiod input, if both optic nerves were cut, there would be no change in melatonin because the input comes from the eyes. And since light inhibits the production of melatonin from the penile gland, without light input, the melatonin levels would be constantly high. This, however, is not the case in birds. That's because birds have extra retinal photoreceptors. Due to their location, they are called deep brain photoreceptors or DVPs. So birds can absorb light in their brain. Because of this additional pathway in birds, the eye receptors are not necessary for photo-induced gonadal growth. This is supported by studies where birds were either penolectomized or blinded via sectioning of the optic nerve. Based on what we know of the retinal pathway, we can see that this would prevent the necessary hormones from being released. However, the birds in these studies were still able to develop gonads and were even able to have peak gonadal activity. Another result from these studies was an action spectrum for the sensitivity of the photopigment. The results support the belief that it is likely a rhodopsin visual pigment because its wavelength of maximum sensitivity is 492 nanometers. These photoreceptors are believed to be located in the mediobasal hypothalamus. So as I mentioned, due to the unique avian skeletal anatomy, the bird skull is permeable to light. When light shines on the skull, some is refracted back off the skull, while some will penetrate. However, not all of the light that penetrates will make it to the photoreceptors and the hypothalamus because of its impact angle or the amount of brain tissue it first has to go through. Because of their location, the deep brain photoreceptors can also be called encephalic receptors. In an experiment by Foster and Follett, a fiber optic was used to shine light on the skull and a spectroradiometer was used to measure the absorption at different wavelengths. With their data, they determined a percent sensitivity, that is essentially the number of photons of a given wavelength that reach the base of the brain, which is where the photoreceptors are. This percent sensitivity is plotted on the y-axis of the graph with the wavelength on the x-axis in nanometers. The plotted points are data point values, and the curve is the standard sensitivity curve for the rhodopsin pigment. This close fit is what leads researchers to believe that the photoreceptors are rhodopsin-like photopigments. They show the greatest percent sensitivity, or highest number of photons, at the photoreceptor at about 500 nanometers. Past trials have shown that red light, 650 nanometers, is most readily absorbed. However, new research in the last five years 
suggests that those trials did not account for the evidence that red light passes through the brain tissue about 30 times more easily than other light. So it makes sense that more of it is seen near the hypothalamus. Like mammals, birds have a circadian clock to keep track of their circadian rhythm. However, unlike mammals, birds have two clocks present. The first clock, located in the suprachiasmatic nuclei, regulates the penal gland and is present in both birds and mammals. The second clock, which is not found in mammals, is located in the penile gland. This is unique because it allows the penile gland to still secrete melatonin rhythmically under a light-dark cycle, even when it is isolated from its neural inputs. Although these findings are interesting, it is not really known what the purpose of the extra clock is in birds, or how it even relates to their extra-retinal photoreceptors. All right, so that was a lot of information, but here are the main takeaways from what we talked about. Birds' photoperiodism is different from mammals because they possess extra-retinal photoreceptors in the mediobasal hypothalamus in addition to the retinal photoreceptors traditionally found in mammals. Therefore, the light input from eyes is not necessary for birds to signal gonadal activity, but it is important in mammal breeding. Finally, birds have two circadian clocks, whereas mammals only have one. This diagram is a visual representation of what we just summarized, but it goes a little more in detail. The main point is that the light goes to the eyes in mammals, and in birds, it goes to the deep brain photoreceptors. You can also see the single circadian clock represented in the suprachiasmatic nuclei of the mammal. Whereas if you recall, birds have two clocks, one in the suprachiasmatic nuclei and one located in the penile gland. These are my sources. Thank you for listening.